Jaqueline Crawford has left the chat and entered the portal. We gotta talk about it after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folks? It's RJ Young. I'm not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. We gotta talk about Jaqueline Crawford entering the portal and how, yeah, we probably saw that one coming. First, I want to encourage you, sign up for my newsletter. If you do so, between now and December 7th, you are entered to win this bad boy right here. It's a Hertz lamp or an OU lamp, depending on which side of the OU thing that you are on. If you're not an OU fan, you can re-gift it because I'm going to send it as soon as I pull the drawing on that day, so you'll get it before Christmas and be able to give it to, I don't know, your favorite Texas fan as a nice troll. I'm always down for a good troll. And uh, don't sweat the technique. Uh, you'll find out what this is all about here soon enough. Stay tuned to the channel. So, got to talk about Jaqueline Crawford, who came to Oklahoma out of Rockdale as an athlete, which means that maybe he could have played on one side of the ball, maybe he could have played on the other side of the ball, but his makeup and his speed had you thinking, hey, maybe that dude plays a slot, maybe he plays the Charleston Rambo Z, he could have gone either way on that front. And after, you know, being a part of that class for which we thought was going to be I, a lot of Buki class, and Ronnie Perkins turned out to be a player. Buki is the best nickel that Oklahoma has, but that ain't saying a whole lot here to date. I still believe in Buki. I still think he's being played out of position. I think that dude's the natural corner. And they convinced they still got that dude playing nickel and matching them up on tight ends, but I can't help that. Speaking of which, you're trying to find somebody to help you out or more importantly, to provide some depth, some backing to the five foot eight dude that moved from corner to playing nickel for the second time in two years. And we thought maybe it was going to be Chance Silvey, who was coming back from a torn Achilles last year. Thought maybe it was going to be a Jeremiah Cradell, who's coming down from Matter Day and absolutely play some outstanding strong safety out there. We thought even maybe, just perhaps, it could be somebody like Justin Broyles, who knows what to do out there at strong safety, moved in back to corner, or to Quaylen Crawford. Jaqueline Crawford also had offers from Texas, A&M, that is Ampersand U and Texas, also Notre Dame. This dude chose Oklahoma over all those places, and I thought maybe the move for him to defense back was going to work, but then later on, Trajan Bridges got tried out at safety and, and defense back, and it's like, yo, Grinch is really trying to make something work over here, which also means that either one, you really just don't want to put Jeremiah Cradell out there or Woody Washington out there, who is another cornerback converted to safety, or you don't really want to put Jamal Morris out there, which ain't saying a good thing about where you're at right now with your defensive back development. And I get that they're puppies and you want to redshirt as many guys as you could possibly redshirt. But man, Crawford didn't work it out, Bridges didn't work it out, and it's all Buki all the time. And yet and still, you don't really like what you're getting out of Buki. And he picked up the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Iowa State, which was selfish, and we know that. And I'm sure Grinch has had a talk to with him. But now with... Quaylen Crawford Aaron the portal in the hunt for a Big 12 championship, not after South Dakota, not after UCLA, but right before game day and in Waco and primetime television. You wonder, man, really, what's the timing like here? And the timing is, the dude played in one game this year. He's played in all in one game. And I've been saying, as with Starlin Baldwin, as with Miguel Edwards, as with... Hold on, I'm going to think of it. Starlin Baldwin, Miguel Edwards, Jonathan Perkins, linebacker. See, I did it off the dome. You have to know that these guys want to play football, and they're not playing football in Grinch's defense. And I think it's also telling that this is the first dude that is kind of, sort of, on the offense to enter the portal, but he's not really on the offense. He's a defender, right? He's a defense back. And that's telling you that Grinch is washing out and or holding back the talent that he doesn't think is ready to go. And Grinch is on record saying, look, if you haven't played by this time, that's on you. We have lots of data to show. We want to play as many guys as possible because they'll put you in against UCLA when the score is still in question, against South Dakota when the score was still in question. Uh, man, we were looking around going, yo, why is Kenneth Murray Jr. taking off the field against Kansas? And why is Brian Meade out there? These are games in which perhaps if you were good enough, Grinch is saying you would be playing. And if you're not playing, that's telling you everything that you need to know. I honestly don't believe that this is going to be the last guy to enter the portal based on what we've seen and how this defense is going and where this defense is trending. Because bringing a guy like Caleb Kelly back into the fold with, sh with shoulder pads on, not that he ever left the team, but with shoulder pads on, tells you a lot. And I have wondered aloud, 
What's it going to take for Caleb Kelly to get on the field? Because now we're into the four games, right? You got Baylor, Texas Christian, Oklahoma State, and then, us, you hope, a Big 12 championship game. So that's four. To which there's somebody out there that's saying, hey, RJ, you might want to hold him off so that you can use that red shirt to get in the college football playoff national championship game. You, sir, are an optimist. And I like you. I like you. But I'm not. I live in the real world, dog. I work for a living. And I'm here to tell you that if Caleb Kelly can help you right now, you need to make, put him in there into the rotation because the rotation ain't what the rotation should be. Brian Asamoah ain't there yet. Brian Mead ain't there yet. Levi Draper, where's he at? These are all guys for which I thought would be backing up Deshaun White and Kenneth Murray in meaningful snaps and meaningful ways. That just ain't been what it's been. Caleb Kelly might actually be able to come in there and help you. And I'm saying that to say that if Jaquayla Crawford could help Oklahoma's defense, I think he would be out there. And I think that about all of these cats. I think the freshmen, some of them, they're ready to go. Some of them are not. Some of them, like David Uguaybu, are ready for the challenge right away and ready to go play. Some of them are not. All right? You haven't seen much of Mark Jackson either. Think about that for a second. That could be a possible dude that you're thinking about bringing into the portal. Robert Barnes isn't a guy you've seen a whole lot of. These are all guys for which I thought would be contributing in really, really huge snaps. I'm talking upwards of 700 snaps defensively this year, and they just they ain't been there, right? And I'm wondering how much of this is Odom, how much of this is Grinch, how much is Scheme, how much is this the, the circumstances? Because for Riley, his refrain for a while was, we don't get enough snaps to give everybody the, as many touches as we want to give them. We get maybe 59, 52 snaps or whatever, and then we got to go and we got to make it work. Well, now, with the defense, that ain't the case. With the defense, it seems to be a talent thing, which is more of an indictment on Mike Stoops than it is on Alex Grinch because these are Mike Stoops' cats that Alex Grinch is recruiting for the most part. Although, Uguaybu committed to Oklahoma when Alex Grinch was on staff, and you'll see Uguaybu is out there, right? So that's, that's also part of it. And I think you're going to see more of the guys that Grinch brought in here to play are going to play more than some of the guys that Mike Stoops brought in here to play because not he doesn't like them or... Like, it's not, I don't think it's personal. I think it's a skill set. And I think that the rush in position is one in which David Uwebu was brought into Oklahoma to play. Mark Jackson might not fit what Alex Grinch thinks the rush end is. That's my point here. But with Crawford, you're also just down another player. You're down another guy on your scout team. You're down another guy on the practice squad. You're down another body that can help you get better. And every coach in America will tell you, I need bodies. I need talent. To sharpen talent. If I don't have enough bodies to challenge everybody in front of the person who is the starter, we're not going to be as good as we should be. So this hurts Oklahoma as much as anything when we're talking about depth and we're talking about iron sharpening and iron because Jaquelin Crawford still is that fast. And if nothing else, you can you can't simulate speed. You need speed to to see it, to know what it's going to do. And Crawford could do that for you. And I just I wanted it to work out for him at nickel. I wanted it to work out for him at slot or H or Z. It just hasn't. So we're going to see what this means for Oklahoma going forward. As for Jaqueline Crawford, salute you, young man. I appreciate that this is what you need to do. I want him to go somewhere where he is going to play, and he's going to get meaningful snaps. And as I do for all of the kiddos, I wish for him an All-American future. I want him to play professional football, and I want him to achieve all that he has set out to achieve. All right, that's it for me. Doses.